we're, we've almost filled up this first uh, recruiting class for Luke Fickle. How do we think he did? Let's talk about it. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, Badger fans? Welcome to Lockdown Badges, your team every single day. I'm your host, Ryan Herrings, and I am so grateful uh, for you all to be here to, you know, get a, even a tiny bit of your day is incredibly humbling. So thank you for that. Uh, we have a really fun show today. Great guest coming up. We got Jake Meyer coming on the show. I got the name right this time, Badger Notes. <laughs> um, they are doing prolific work over there, and I am stoked to get them on for the first time and hopefully not the last time to talk some recruiting. Jake, what's going on, my man? Man, thank you so much for having me on. We were talking before the show. I've been watching the show every day for about a year now so it's truly an honor i really appreciate you having me on no that's awesome man and, and thank you for that all right let's just get into it so luke fickle uh first full cycle obviously he was here to kind of fill out last year's cycle for football but first full cycle we're mostly full at this point if you had to assign a letter grade for what he's done in this class how would you grade it so far you know, I'm teetering on kind of like a B plus to an A minus. I mean, when you look at the the level of talent that they've that Luke Fickle and company have brought in, I mean, you're you have a blue chip ratio. I think it's about 33 percent, maybe even higher at this point. I mean, you're bringing in these four star guys who have loaded offer lists from powerhouses, and I, I mean that can't be understated. Just how much of a shift it's been ever since we've. Um, departed from the Paul Christ era. I mean, you're bringing in a different level of recruiting, obviously a different kind of mentality in, in Luke Fickle, but the, the difference in recruiting has just been night and day. And I, I think with the quality of the guys we're bringing in, bringing in guys that we probably wouldn't get under Paul Christ, I, I have to give this either a B plus or an A minus, kind of teetering on, on that scale there. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna go A minus uh, for a lot of the same reasons you just indicated. I. You can't go A, or I can't go A, just because that I, I feel like there's a giant spot on defensive line that one or more two guys there would really push that class in. But I look at who they hit it at cornerback. Uh, the quarterback, I think, is a huge get. Two great running backs. Uh, Grant Steck, I love. The offensive line class, I love, even after missing out on a couple in-state kids. So I'm going to go A-. minus. It's just, to me, missing that one or two uh, kind of defensive line prospects. And if, if they had hit like a Benedict Duma, for example, or a Nichols, I, I think it's an A for me. Absolutely. I'm in the same boat. I mean, it, the the defensive line recruiting, it's been the Achilles heel so far of, uh, I mean, it's very early in, in this, uh, in this group's tenure, but it, it's glaring. I mean, it, it's the, it's the one thing that if we hit on a couple of those other guys, like, as you mentioned, uh, Benedict Duma or Dominic Nichols, I mean, we could be teetering on an A or possibly even A plus if a couple other battles shake our way for sure. Well, let's also talk about this too. Oh, geez, I hit my mic. So if anybody's listening, I apologize. But if anybody, everybody should be listening. Sorry. Um, you know, it's his first full year too, right? So this, to me, he still hasn't built up all the relationships, you know, that he's going to keep building in Madison. He hasn't even done, gone to the field yet. If this becomes a really good year, that uh, the concept is proven successful in the football field, we're throwing the ball all over, Longo looks great, the defense is still clicking under Trestle. Like, to me, that's almost more impressive than the 10 rivals four-star players, right? To me, it's almost more impressive to do that in this first year in Madison when he hasn't even really shown it on the field. Exactly. And, I mean, as you touched on with the relationships, I mean, the, you know, it's been a talking point about in-state recruiting, things like that. Um, but that is something that's going to come. I mean, it just has to be proven on the football field, of course. I mean, that like you're going to you're going to be building these relationships and you're going to bring in these in-state guys once you kind of prove yourself on the field and establish yourself in Wisconsin, just in the community in general. That's going to come with time. And so I think when we're looking at like the future of the program, I think there's a lot of upside and a lot to like about I mean what's been proven so far and what's going to come yeah I, I agree with that all right let's get into some superlatives we wanted to have some fun with this talk about our favorite recruits highest upside biggest steal most underrated so far and again we we're saying this in full full understanding that recruiting has a ways to go still right it, it's a wild wild world but uh let's start here what is your best recruit in this class your 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 favorite recruit in this class right now so my favorite, it, it was really tough to narrow this down. There's just so many guys to like in this class. Uh, for me, though, it's Anelu Lafayette. 
um, I mean, the commitment video that he had, that kind of made him an automatic favorite for me, just absolutely electric stuff. Um, but no, I mean, the Nick Herbig comparison is obvious, both from Hawaii, similar skill sets. But Anelu Lafayette, I really think is going to be a contributor when he steps on campus. I mean, he has a lot of physical tools already. I mean, he's got great burst. He's got good strength. I mean, he, I also think he has a great ability to diagnose plays, great vision. I mean, there's a lot that is already there, and he's going to build on that in his senior year. And I think we're I'm going to see we're going to see him probably climb the rankings even a little further, at least in my view. I think it's going to happen, and he's easily become one of one of my favorites as soon as he hopped on board. He was one of my favorites when he was just a priority target for them, uh, but when they were able to pick him up. I mean, he's was solidified as my favorite prospect by far. Yeah. Somebody has been looking at my paper here. I I have Lafayette (laughs) as well. Like I, for, for all the reasons you said, and I just want to add in two other ones. The the first one is, and I've talked about this before. If this is, this is a prospect whose lineage, whose recruiting lineage goes back to Jim Leonard and Bobby April for the Badgers. Like, and, and the evaluation skills of Bobby April, the outside linebacker, are really, really strong. Jim Leonard knows defensive talent. Then Tressel comes in, and they want him, and Fickle wants him. That's a lot of minds that say, yeah, that that guy right there. Let, let's go pick that dude up. So for that reason, um, so many talent evaluators that we think very highly of checking the yes box, I, I think he's a stud. I think he's an early player. I think he's an impact guy. Um, and in the interview with him, the I was able to get him on the show. I think um, Badger knows his uh, done a written interview with him, if I if I remember correctly. But um, getting Lafayette on the show, the one thing that stuck out is incredibly humble. Really, really seems like a high character kid, son of a coach. So I think he checks a ton of boxes, man, both from on the field, but also that intangible side of being a humble kid, hard worker, coach's kid. I think he's going to be a star in Madison. I think so. And I mean, like you mentioned, his his personality, I mean, he just has – I mean, he's got a lot of it. And also, um, I mean, you had that interview um, where they were talking about why Wisconsin for Hawaiian football players. And I mean, Anelu Lafayette fits that mold perfectly. He's going to be, I think, a fan favorite when he gets to Madison. I think he just has everything that you want in a guy that is going to come to Wisconsin. All right, let's see if we differ on this one. I'm going to go first on this one. We'll keep kind of going back and forth. Uh, Prospect that we think in this class has the most upside. Um, if everything clicks, we're not saying this is the most realistic. This is like the high school baseball draft thing where the high school pitcher that throws 99, there's there's a high chance he flames out. But if he hits, he's Nolan Ryan, right? The, right. the prospect in this class that if everything clicks for me, he's going to be the the best player is Thomas Heiberger. There's just there, – listen, there are just not many – forget at the high school level, at the college level, there are not many 6'4 linebackers with a 37-inch vertical. And, again, I'll yep. just retell the story. They just sent the athletic measurables to Texas. I think it was Texas Tech and the Texas Tech offered just off that. No film. The coach was telling me this story. They said, stand in the doorway with your arms out. He did. They sent that picture to the Texas Tech coaching staff. And they said, what's your measurables, track numbers and whatnot? And they said, yep, we're we're offering you right now. We don't even need to see a clip of football. His upside is immense if he hits. Yeah, that is who I had written down as well. I mean, it's (laughs) – I mean, look, it's kind of – I mean – maybe a little bit obvious like you just just he already has the athletic measurables he has everything that you want in um like a prototypical linebacker i do think he offers like a little bit of versatility too i mean he's you can see him lining up on the edge for sure and he can he's going to be able to get into the backfield um i think he's probably still a little bit raw when it comes to like coverage but when it comes to going after the ball carrier or just being disruptive i mean I think he already has that and he's going to be able to touch and tap into that even more. He's going to benefit from a college strength and conditioning program. He's going to be able to bulk up even more than he already is. And I mean, I don't know. I I just think the upside there is just, it's too hard not to notice this this kid just has everything you want. Yeah. It's obvious. And uh, coming up after the break, we're going to see if we diverge anywhere. Let me give you one more quick high upside. I think Emerson Mandel on the offensive line, just throw another upside guy out there. Um, just really strong, moves really well. We need to see if he can pass block. What's another maybe high upside guy off the top of your head now that we both talked to Heiberger? What's another one that pops up for you? 
I think Kevin Haywood uh, really stands out to me. I, I do think he has NFL potential. Um, I just often the tape that I've seen from him, he offers a lot of what you want in a Wisconsin offensive lineman. And I think he's going to be one of the next offensive linemen uh, to come out of Wisconsin. That's going to make it to the NFL. Yeah. Haywood's a really good one. All right. We're going to take a quick break coming up. We're going to talk about the biggest hit in this class and the biggest miss. We're talking about that next on Locked On Badgers. Uh, really quick second to say thank you to everybody tuning in and a quick second to say a thank you to our, our friends of the show over at eBay Motors. Um, you know, Jake would attest to this when you're putting together the right team, you need the right parts, whether it's at Badger Notes, whether it's on the football field. Um, it's no different with your car. You need the right parts to make your car run correctly. And that's what eBay Motors is here for. Every part needs to fit just right. And if you've been around, if you've been in every day or you've heard my story of getting carjacked, uh, that, that car needed a lot of work when I got when I got that baby back in the garage. I wish I had eBay Motors to help fill out that car, that Trans Am that went missing from me uh, for a couple of weeks. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can make sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage. Look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride eBay guaranteed fit only available to us customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions do apply. All right, let's get Jake back on. Once again, appreciate everybody tuning in. Jake, let's move into our next one here. I'm going to give you the, the first one here, see if we diverge a little bit. Uh, what's the biggest commit uh, recruiting win of this cycle? I go back and forth between um, a couple of them. One of them for me, though, I mean, we just touched on it, but Kevin Haywood. His offer list, I mean, he had offers from Alabama, Georgia, Michigan, Penn State, USC, like all of the big time blue blood programs that were in on this guy. I think he had nearly 30 offers towards the end of his recruitment. Um, I mean, just that in of itself is is a huge win. And like I touched on uh, right before the break, I was talking about, you know, I think he has NFL level upside. Um, and just also adding that on, and the fact that Wisconsin was able to beat out powerhouse offers like he had at the end of his recruitment, I think he's the biggest win. Um, I would also say that um, Emilio Agar is up there for me as well. I mean, just just a win in the sense that this is going to be a kid who who can contribute right away, and he already flashes at the high school level. Yeah, those are those are two really good ones for sure. I actually went uh, Dylan Jones just just because I uh, elite talent, good offer list, but the the Ability to sell him when there's already another four star back in the class and a three star back to me, if when we're talking, when I when I think of the word uh, recruiting win, you know, closing out a tough recruitment, it's it's being able to convince recruits even when it's not the easiest sell. Like it's an easy sell when you're the only back, right? Um, so to be able to add him as a third back with the offer list with the talent he has, uh, to me that was a really really impressive win. And I think, I mean, I I just love his film. So I, to me, that's a really impressive win as well. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, like you mentioned, when you're bringing in, um, you're bringing in Dylan Jones, who I think complements um, uh, Gideon Atuka and Darian Dupree very well. And um, I mean, just having that trio of running backs in this class, I mean, it, it's perfect. We're getting insurance at the position. That's what's important, especially with Brain, Braylon Allen and Chesma Lucy on the way out. I mean, like, and I mean, just bringing in a guy of his level and the fact we're able to convince them with two other guys already on board, that's just a huge win. It doesn't matter how you shake it. That is such a huge win. Yep, for sure. And you're also by yourself recruiting insurance. I know you're talking depth chart insurance, but you're also by yourself insurance in case somebody flips, you know, down mm -hmm. the road or, you know, that it happens in recruiting. So, you know, you kind of have to stack talent. Let's go into this one. Um, biggest miss. I'll start here. I know everybody watching the show is going to expect me to say Garrett Sexton. Uh, I love Garrett Sexton's film. I think they missed on him, but I don't think he's the biggest miss because I, if, if we're being honest and fair, I think they did a really good job of pivoting uh, when they weren't able to land Sexton and Roy. I like the offense line they're bringing in. And if, if you bring in good talent, like you can miss on other good talent. It's not that big a deal. So for me, it's Benedict Duma. I think defense line we talked about is an area that I don't think they upgraded as much as they needed to in this class. Uma to me feels like a guy that was right in the sweet spot, right? Um, coming from, the, the Northeast where you can go and pluck talent. He wanted a really high academic school. That's Wisconsin. He didn't end up at a blue blood football school. It feels like we could have offered 
a lot of what Stanford gives them, plus the football aspect of a blue, not a blue blood, but a really good program. I wish we could have closed that. That would have been an elite get. Um, so to me, Benedict Duma is the biggest miss here. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, I think you can really chalk up, um, chalk up any defensive line recruit that we missed out on as probably the biggest miss. Um, I was going to mention Dominic Nichols probably as the, the biggest miss in my view. Um, I mean, Wisconsin was just right there at the end of his recruitment. And I mean, there were reports coming out that Wisconsin felt very confident after um, his visit. And it seemed like things were trending in the right direction. And then, I mean, obviously, he inevitably went to Michigan. Um, I mean, there is still the possibility of a flip. There was some smoke earlier in the off season that potentially he's looking at a flip. Um, it was, you know, some stuff circulating on social media and whatnot. And that is still certainly a possibility. Michigan is absolutely loaded at the defensive line position. So that is something to, you know, keep an eye out for. But um, yeah, I mean, Dominic Nichols, just how close Wisconsin was at the end um, and then just losing losing him out to a big 10 school. Of course it's Michigan. You know, you're going to lose, if you're going to lose to a big 10 school, it's probably going to be Michigan, Ohio state, Penn state, you know, but I mean, it's, it's still a big miss for me just cause, and I just like his film. I mean, there's just a lot to like about his film. So that adds on to it as well. Yeah. That we talked an upside when we were talking Heiberg earlier, that's another dude with just a massive frame and you can just see the upside uh, with him and Michigan got a good one. I think I, I, I hope they don't hold on to him, but I think they probably do. Uh, yeah. Let's go most underrated. We're going to talk about some other underrated prospects we want to hit our wagons to, but who is your most underrated prospect in this class? I am a bit biased towards wide receivers. It's my favorite position. I've loved watching wide receivers ever since I was a kid, but Kyan Barry Johnson. I'm so glad that I'm able to discuss this in, on this platform. He is criminally underrated, in my opinion. I love his film, what he brings to Wisconsin. I mean, it, 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 it's ridiculous. This guy has a great catch radius. He's got great hands, great footwork. He's a crisp route runner. I mean, what, what more can you ask for? This, this kid, I think, is going to be really special. I think in his senior year, we're definitely going to see him get bumped up the rankings. I think he could probably be maybe a mid-four-star guy. It's definitely his ceiling, I'd say, is a mid-four-star guy. But there's just so much that I love about Kyan Barry Johnson's game. And I, I think he is going to contribute rather early when, when he gets to Madison. There's, I'm just completely enamored with Kyan Barry Johnson, in my opinion. No, I love it. I love it, man. Let me ask you a question. And uh, I want to get to mine in a second, but I want to pivot off Kyan Barry Johnson for a second. Who, mm-hmm. who, do you like, who are you higher on coming into Madison, Kyan Barry Johnson or Tresh Kekahuna? Ooh, wow. That's a great question. I really hope I don't upset Justin here by picking Ty and Barry Johnson. Careful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm going to tread lightly. I, I just, I think Ty and Barry Johnson, um, I think he just offers a little bit more than Tretch does in, in, in my view. I mean, look, I'm no talent evaluator. I don't get paid to the big bucks to do this stuff. I just really like what I see in Ty and Barry Johnson. I think he, really flashes on film. I think he flashes more than Tretch did on his high school field, in my opinion. Um, but again, Justin, if you're listening, I apologize. I know how much you love Tretch. <laughs> well, and that, listen, that's a good answer. And those are the, by the way, I would say those are the, the good type of questions to have. Like you want to be answering which receiver do I like more instead of, man, do I have a receiver I like, right? Like we've shifted the right. narrative. At, I say we've, like we had, They've shifted the narrative at Wisconsin. <laughs> we have had nothing to do with this, but they've shifted the narrative at Wisconsin at receiver really quickly. Um, underrated for me, I'm going Dylan Johnson. I know we I just got done talking about defensive line isn't isn't quite as good as I think it needs to be this cycle, but I think that's an interesting piece that a lot of people are just kind of glossing over, right? You know, when you start reading something, you get kind of bored, you just start glossing through stuff. I think people yeah. are kind of glossing through him a little too much. He, I think there's a wrestling background there, which I like. Um it's somebody that the staff identified early. They went after that I think is important. And I think he carries the weight really well. He's 290 and it's not a sloppy 290. I think he's going to get a little bigger, stronger. And I think he's going to be a really good player. I, I wonder if the ceiling is there to be a great player. I don't know if it is, but a really good player is still a really good recruiting get. And I think he has the ability to be there pretty easily. Yeah. And I think with his uh, wrestling background, I mean, that that also is going to translate 
onto the football field. I mean, it already has. I mean, he's like a three-star guy. I think he's probably going to climb a little bit in his senior year once he gets some more recognition. But, I mean, his wrestling background is really going to benefit his game, especially at the collegiate level where it sounds like he's going to be doing both. I mean, that's going to be something that we're going to have to keep an eye out for. But, yeah, no, Dylan Johnson, I mean, he he's a great player, and I, I think he's going to be a contributor. We're just going to have to see – um, and what capacity he's going to be. But I think he, he can be a difference maker, for sure. All right, we're going to take a very quick break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about three other underrated prospects we believe in. We're going to hit our wagons to plus play a little over-under with potential decommits. We're going to do that next on Lockdown Badgers. But first, a quick break for our friends of the show. And as always, a very quick thank you to everybody tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Uh, it means a lot. All right, let's get Jake back on. Uh, Jake, before we... Uh, jump into our other underrated prospects. Uh, definitely take a second, talk about the work you have going on. Where can people find what you're doing? Yeah, so uh, just, you know, con- continuing to plug away over at Badger Notes, uh, doing a lot of recruiting coverage nowadays. That's kind of my niche at this moment. But um, yeah, just providing content as much as possible. Um, we're going to have a really special year, I think. We got some exciting things coming up. So really excited to share those. And um, yeah, we'd love to have you guys check out the site and just follow what we're doing. Yeah, if for those who haven't yet, and I can't imagine many have, if you haven't gone over there and seen the amount of content that Badger's Notes is creating, they are doing an incredible job. A lot of talented writers. We've had, obviously, um, a couple of them now on the show, but continue checking out their work. It's incredible. It's something I turn to all the time to get a different perspective and different insight into the Badgers. It's not cookie-cutter stuff over there, which is one of the reasons I really appreciate it, by the way. All right, let's get into this. Um, three underrated prospects. We talked about our most underrated. Who are three other underrated prospects? So kind of that mid three-star composite range that you would hit your wagons to. Yeah, I think Raphael Dunn is probably the one who sticks out to me, arguably the most when we're talking about underrated players other than Kyan Barry Johnson. Um, he's just going to fill in really nicely in that dollar position under Mike Trussell, uh, Mike Trussell's defense. Um, I mean, he just does everything at a really productive level. And there's just a, a lot to like about his game. I, I don't think he particularly flashes in one area over the other. But as I said, he's just productive. And I think that is going to translate well to when he gets to Madison. Uh, do you want me to go over my other two or you want to throw one in? Yeah, let, let's do your three and I'll throw my three out there. Sure. Um, so my second one, I have Landon Goth here. Um, he's the you know the in-state kid out of Bayport. Um, I just really like his upside. I think he's a prototypical Wisconsin linebacker. Uh, I mean, he's a bit raw in some areas for sure. And I mean, that's why he's, you know, like a composite mid three-star guy. Um, but I think he's going to fill in nicely. He's going to have a little bit of versatility in his game. He's going to be lining up on the edge. Um, I think he probably could um play well in coverage we're gonna have to see some more from him in that aspect but i do think that he can you know be a productive player uh when he steps on campus and lastly i see this name kind of get thrown thrown around a lot for underrated prospects but jay harper um he just has really great ball skills i think he's got great instincts um he can really keep up with receivers on the perimeter doesn't really get burned a lot also, just really good closing speed when it comes to going after ball carriers. Um, yeah, so those are my three. And um, I would really place my bets on Rafael Dunn if I were you. Yeah, I like that list. Um, I almost went Gothier on mine, too. He didn't quite make it, but I think he is. The funny thing with Gothier, and I don't know if I'm unique on this, the first time, I, and again, I'm not, much like you said, I am also not a professional talent evaluator. But when I watched film on Gothier the first time, I wasn't as enthralled, but the more I like actually watched of him, the more I started liking it more and more and, and feeling and like the instinctive ability. I think there's more there than people talk about. So I think that's a really good pick. I also went Raphael Dunn as one of my three. You kind of talked about him. I just think I just think the frame is so unique. And this is a defense that knows how to use that type of athleticism and wingspan. I'm really excited to see kind of where he goes. My other two, I have Xavier Lucas, who again, it, this kind of depends on where you look or like rivals is higher on him. But he's an 86 composite overall. I just think the level of competition he's playing down there. Uh, talking to Lucas, he is 6'2". That's that's from Lucas. He's coming in as a corner. He has legit track speed. So even even if you just take that in a box, right, 6'2", track speed, uh, coming in as a corner, that's pretty unique by itself. And then he's playing an incredibly talented team every day in practice. I like that. And here's my third one. And I said it when he committed. People were really down on it. Uh, getting a Tuka, I, I, there's more there than like you get lost in it because of Dylan Jones, right? And Dupree, 
because their highlights are so flashy. There is more there to Atuka than just a plodding kind of power back. There's, he's got pretty good feet. Um, I think he has pretty good vision. He runs out of the same type of offense in high school that Longo wants to run in Wisconsin. Um, and I think he gives the Wisconsin staff something a little different. I like Atuka more than most. Yeah, I, I mean, like you said, he definitely gets overshadowed when we're talking about Darian Dupree, Dylan Jones. I mean, those two guys are kind of all-purpose backs where maybe Gideon Atuka isn't quite an all-purpose back in the same way that those two are. I mean, you know, like you mentioned, Gideon Atuka is more of a power runner, and that's obviously where he's really going to thrive the most, I, I think, for sure. But um, as you mentioned, I do think there's more to his game than, than people give him credit for uh, when, when we're talking about um, – you know, his, his ability to just get down, get downhill. I mean, he's relatively shifty, not as shifty as you're going to talk about with, uh, with Dylan Jones, of course, but I mean, there's something there. I mean, there, there is a lot more to his game than people give him credit for, for sure. All right, let's go on to, um, and we're not even talking any names, but over under 1.5 D commits from now until this class signs, I'm going to go over. I, I'm going to go over – just listen, I just think that's the nature of the recruiting world we live in. I think this is going to be a good Badgers year. I think these kids are relatively locked in. But listen, nobody would have – when Rob Booker committed, nobody would have thought that dude's going to decommit before the season starts, let alone, I mean, let alone before the season starts. So I'm going to say over just because I think that's the nature of the beast in college football. I think so too, but I think 1.5 is a really great line. I, I think there are a lot of recruits in this class who are really buying into what Luke Fickle is doing. But as you mentioned, I mean, it, it's just the landscape of college football recruiting. I mean, you're going to get, especially these 2024 kids, they still have their senior years to go. They're going to get more attention. Um, and there's going to be some guys who are going to jump higher than others for sure. But I, I do think it's going to be over. I, I think there's going to be probably two maybe three. I, I guess we're going to have to see how that shakes out. Um, but I, I am going to go over as well. It's just it's just how recruiting is in, in the modern day college football um, atmosphere. Yep. No, I agree. Uh, let's get some comments. So this is my fault. I put this out woefully late in terms of what your guys' thoughts were. So we'll get your comments. Lee, for this show, we'll do a wrap up of this. Throw your comments in. Who's your most underrated? Who's your favorite prospect your three under other underrated prospects the biggest hit the biggest miss etc cetera, etc cetera. luke fickle's great up to this point um uh, but we did get some comments in here this is from mike husby uh Her herberger is the upside because of the physical traits same with met toyer most underrated went with jay harper and Raphael dunn they could be stars on the defense i mean that's your guy right there mike or jake he's, he's right along with where you're thinking yeah 100 percent. i mean he hit on everything i mean that that's really incredible i feel like we're we're completely locked in there <laughs> Yep. The interesting one is he went um, Heiberger and Met Toyer for upside, right? And we didn't really talk about Met Toyer from an upside standpoint. But when you, again, that's a guy, like uh, we talked about uh, Jay, Jay uh, Harper, right? Jay, um, yeah, Harper, where, right? Yeah, sorry, I was getting yeah. my names mixed up. <laughs> I was going to get Key Taylor from the last class, and I was getting these, the two defensive backs mixed up. But, uh, you know, Met Toyer is another guy where if you just look at the physical tools in a box, 6'5", can move, great arm. Um that's a lot of upside for a quarterback, man. For sure. I, I think we're, what is he, uh, is he rated a three-star? Uh, I, I guess it kind of depends on what service you look yeah, at. Yeah, right. he's a composite three. Rivals has him as a four and two, four, seven, as they are for, for a lot of prospects. This cycle are, is lower. But we listen, I to be fair, I've always tried to go with composite. It tries to filter everything in. So he is a three-star composite. Yeah. And I think he's going to climb that for sure. I mean, and yeah, there, there is just a ton of upside in this game. I think there's a lot of arm talent there. And I mean, I, I'm really excited to see exactly what he's going to bring to Wisconsin. Obviously there's kind of a, a bloated depth chart when it comes in, in terms of talent when it, um, at, at quarterback, but I think Mabry has a lot of skills that, that he could probably rise near the top of that pecking order kind of early on, I think. Uh, let's go Ed uh, Naroik. And I, if I get the name wrong, I apologize. He went Dylan Johnson. He just said Dylan Johnson. So I don't know if the, that's the answer for favorite, best, most upside, most underrated. Um, it's a that's funny. That, that's funny because I think he really fits all those molds. Uh, he really does. I mean, we were talking about that he's kind of underrated. Um, I mean, I, it makes sense how he could be one of your favorite recruits, um, especially, I mean, if you're a fan of Wisconsin wrestling too, I mean, that that's going to add on to it, but I really do think Dylan Johnson kind of fits all of those molds uh, when, when we're talking about his, his skill set. Doesn't he feel like a guy that barring injury, which you, you can never predict, 
he feels like a guy that in three years you're going to look back on and say, yeah, we saw this coming. Like we, we, he's going to be a starter and he's going to be a really solid player. Um, and it doesn't surprise anybody. I think so. I, I think he is going to really tap in, into his potential. And of course, I mean, I, I hate to bring it up again, but his wrestling background, I, I can't overstate um, just how important that is when, when it comes to translating your skills onto the football field. And um, I do think that once he gets into the collegiate level, he's again, he's going to be a guy who's going to benefit from a strength and conditioning program. As you mentioned, he can probably carry some more weight really well. Um, so I, I think down the line, we're going to see, yeah, like we, we kind of saw that this kid had something for sure. You know, one of my favorite parts with the wrestling thing, because you, you said, you know, I hate to keep going back to it, but I think you need to keep going back to it. I went back and ta- uh, saw a clip that Luke Fickle did when he was at Ohio State. And he, he was talking about that wrestling background that they look for in linemen. And he said something that, because I've always known, like, uh, the leverage, the ability to use your hands, the toughness. Like, those are all wrestling things that translate to football. But the one thing he said that I don't think I ever really thought of is he said, wrestlers need to be incredibly competitive SOBs. Like, you're not in wrestling unless you really are able to go toe for toe to somebody and dominate them. The way he yeah. said it, I was like, oh, wow, that's that's a mentality thing. That's true. And, I mean, Luke Fickle was a was a wrestler, too. Um, and so he very well knows. And, and, of course, he was a football player. So he very well knows what, what he's talking about in that aspect. And so I, I think he and, of course, just the, the other recruiters on staff definitely see something in Dylan Johnson that can be tapped into. And... I, I think we're, he's going to be proven right that that this is a kid who can who can make a difference and maybe in a c- couple of years, not sure if it's going to be right away, but I think there's a lot in his game that that he can really contribute. I was banging up these uh, a couple more comments here. This is from Badger and Bormouth. Oh, oh, this is from the Discord. Really appreciate it. He said most underrated Heiberger. Best is Emilio Ogard. Biggest miss Nathan Roy. Um, upside May, uh, Mabry. Uh, most important Mabry. So. Yeah, like, again, that A-guard one, you touched on Emilio. Like, to get a cornerback with that offer list, yeah, like, that just hasn't happened in a long time. So, I think that's a really good list. I think the Roy thing is interesting in terms of biggest miss. Is it just because he went to Minnesota? Yeah, and, of course, he was um, an, an in-state kid, too. So, I mean, that that is definitely going to add into, you know, pro- into being a huge miss. I mean, there's a lot to, to like about his game. I, I'm not as – upset that we missed out on Roy because we have the Wisconsin has some other offensive linemen in this class. We touched on Mandel earlier. Um, I think he's going to be great. I think this offensive line as class as a whole is going to be great. I don't think Roy is a huge miss in, in my view, of course, but, um, but I definitely understand how that can be viewed as a miss for sure. Yeah. And I kind of agree with you on Roy, but more importantly, how do you feel on Sexton? Hmm. <laughs> you know? I'm kidding. I'm just <laughs> uh Sexton I I do think that's a pretty significant miss. I I just I I really like Sexton's game and um I mean he he of course went to Penn State in the uh, did he go to Penn State or am I thinking incorrectly? Penn State, yep. He did go to Penn State. Okay. Yeah, so I mean there it, it adds to the sting that there were I think he's what the third uh in state recruit that landed at Penn State. Um, you know, because you had Corey Smith and of course Donovan Donovan Harbor, who also landed at Penn State. That adds to the sting a little bit. Um, but I, I really liked Sexton's game. I would have loved to see him in, in a Badgers uniform. My man, virtual fist bump. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, last, last comment here. This is from Tyson's Corner. And again, appreciate everybody commenting. Let us know in your comments for uh, – I'll wrap it up in tomorrow's show if we didn't get to yours today. He went most underrated, Dylan Johnson, freak, strength, and athlete. Best commit, Dupree. Um, tons of upside. And then for the upside guys, he has met Toyer, Dupree, Heiberger, Haywood. We hit on a lot of those. You hit on Haywood. I hit on – we both hit on Heiberger. Uh, Dupree is one we haven't talked a lot about, and he has him as both the best commit and one of the upside guys. Did you like – if you had to pick one, and we live in a world right now where we don't, luckily, did you like Dylan's game or Dupree's game more? I think I'm leaning towards Dupree a little bit more. And I think what sets him apart from Dylan Jones is Jones is a little bit more raw in the receiving game than than Dupree is. I think Dupree is just a little bit um, ahead of him in that aspect. And I think he also um, is just kind of a more physical runner than Dylan Jones is. Dylan Jones is extremely shifty. And he's really a threat in open space. Um, I think Dupree is also, but I think his skill set 
just stands out to me a little bit more. Of course, both of them are incredible running backs in their own right. And um, I think both of them are going to be huge contributors, of course. I mean, they, they could be the next two-headed monster. Um, of course, if they both stay um, on uh, stay committed to Wisconsin. But I, I lean Dupree just a little bit more with his skills. Yeah, I'm with I'm with you on that one. Dupree's always been just a tiny fraction of a notch a little higher for me because he has explosive skills that are a little more uh, unlockable, I think, in Longo's offense is maybe a way to put it. Um, anyway, we're going to wrap it up there. We had a couple more comments. Justin, I know, mentioned uh, Emerson Mandel is one of his guys. Ryan E in the Discord mentioned Agard is the best recruit. So let us know in the comments who fits your criteria. We'll do a wrap-up show, throw all those comments out here. Jake, thank you so much for tuning in. If, if you're watching this show, go check out Badger Notes. Go check out Jake's work. He did a great interview earlier with Bob Brady Collins, which we talked about. Um, Jake, thank you so, so much, and I hope this is not the last time. Oh, thank you so much, man, for having me on. Again, this is a really incredible experience, pretty surreal, been following this show and uh, tuning in every day. So I really, really appreciate you having me on. Thank you so much. Yeah, man, absolutely. On Wisconsin, and we'll talk tomorrow.